All right, today we're going to make uh, some quick pickles, um, also known as refrigerator pickles. So we're not gonna be canning to the point that you could put it up on a shelf. We're gonna um, quick pickle into our jars, something you can keep in the refrigerator for a quick snack. We've got one brine we're gonna make, um, but two different um, fruits and vegetable, winter fruits and vegetables that are available at the farmer's market we're gonna use. We're gonna do a quick pickle with beets um, and a quick pi pickle with these beautiful um, gold rush apples. So one brine, two different pickles. Um, these recipes originated at Cook First's Disco Pickle Event, um, which happened um, in 2019. We had some, and it will be ongoing. We look forward to it happening again. We had guest chef Hana Lee from Closed Loop cooking um, gave us these recipes so they're up on our website and you can follow along now um, first things first i'm going to undo my bundle of beautiful little beets here um, and give them give them a rinse we're also going to have a simple recipe um, in order to use the entire beet we'll do a saute of the greens there we go all right so our first pickle our first quick pickle that we're gonna make. We're gonna take our wonderful beets that we just gave a wash. Um, and you probably need like two or three medium sized beets. Um, these are pretty small. They're what was available. I wanted to get something with the greens because I mentioned we're gonna talk about eating the, or pickling the beet and the stem and then sauteing the greens. We're gonna consume this whole plant. Like why waste any of it? That's definitely part of Hana's um, closed looped cooking philosophy. So I've got a handful of beets and I'm just gonna chop off the greens and set those aside for sauteing later. So I've got my beets with their stems and we're gonna pickle the beet and the stems. The stems just make a nice little crunchy um, quick pickle. So why waste them? We'll add them in our jar. I've got my clean um, empty jar. Get that one out of the way. And I'm going to slice off the stems. So I've got those. Remember, they're going to go into my jar, but I'm going to get some of the beet rounds in there first. And it's okay if some of the stems has a little bit of leaf on it still. You could sort those out or not. But so I've given my beet a little haircut. I'm saving the stems to go. I'm gonna slice one of my larger beets. I'm gonna make, cut off the top and the bottom so that it's got two nice flat sides because these flat sides will help it not slip on my cutting board. So it's just really like a food safety maneuver if you're able um, to create flat sides with whatever you're chopping. And I'm going to slice my beet about a quarter of an inch thick. And they're not perfect. They're not perfect. So I'll show you what this one looks like now that I've got my beet rounds. And I need to make quite a few of these to fill my 16 ounce jar. I'm gonna kind of separate them a little bit. They're a little stuck together from being sliced. So I'm just gonna to start to pack my jar with the beet rounds. I'm gonna fill it up. I'm gonna leave um, some head space because when we pour the brine on top of the quick pickles, you want them to be fully submerged. Um, not worried about being perfect whatsoever, but taking another one of my small beets, chopping off the top and the bottom, getting the flat side on the cutting board. These little beets are nice and easy to slice. Those will make tasty little refrigerator snacks to add to a meal. I need maybe one more. Um, you, 
can experiment with different types of beets. Um, golden beets would make really beautiful jar, of course. Um, I like red beets. I like their flavor. I like the color that they'll produce. Get those in the jar. Leave plenty of headspace. It's good to have a napkin handy. Beets are gonna stain your fingers, right? So I've got my beet rounds in there. I've still got plenty of space um, to put in the jar. And that's where I'm going to pack my beet stems. And I, um, I cut them to be the size that when they're standing up, they'll fit in the jar, right? They, you also want them to be submerged when you make your quick pickle. So I'm packing them just into all, all the space I can find. Not too tightly, but I'm filling in the gaps where the beet rounds didn't fill the jar, making sure to push them down. Um, you can do this with a chopstick instead of your finger if you're trying to get them into a small space where your hand can't quite fit. And then for our recipe, um, we've got the beet stems and beet rounds. The jar is pretty packed, but there's headspace at the top. Um, my recipe calls for coriander seeds. two teaspoons of coriander seeds. And when I sprinkle these in, uh, when I'm dispersing them in the jar, they'll fall into the little nooks and crannies, right? They're small. So two teaspoons of coriander seeds, one teaspoon of mustard seeds, yellow mustard or brown mustard seeds, either one works. Um, again, you maybe just saw my teaspoon overflowing, does not need to be perfect. Measurements here for quick pickles. Um, this recipe calls for some fennel seeds, just optional. Um, quick pickles, of course, you can cater to your liking. I'm gonna try some fennel seeds in nice, but just, just a couple pinches. It's a pretty strong flavor. Um, of course, garlic cloves. I love garlic cloves. So my jar is getting pretty full. I'm gonna break off just one of these garlic cloves. Chop off the end, do a little smash with the knife and that'll help, you know, the paper, papery part surrounding the clove break off. Um, and I crushed it a little bit when I smashed it with my knife. So I'm gonna take these pieces of garlic clove just push them down into the jar. It's helping push the mustard and the coriander seeds down. All right, and I've got my jar filled with my wonderful spices. They're starting to shake down inside the jar. This again might be where a um, chopstick might come in handy or a stainless steel straw would help you push some of those things down. But this jar is ready. Um, we'll get our other pickle ready and then we'll pour the brine on top. So I'm going to set aside the beets and we are going to do pickled apples next. We're going to get those ready and packed into our jar. And I'm going to get the quick pickle brine started um, while I prep my second pickle, which is going to be apples. And so a really simple, versatile quick pickle brine came from our friend Hana at Closed Loop, Loop Cooking, who's one of our guest chefs for Disco Pickles. You can find the recipe online, but it is a cup of vinegar, um, apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, whatever you've got or you prefer. Today I had rice vinegar in the pantry. So one cup of vinegar, one cup of water, got my kosher salt. It calls for a tablespoon of salt. Um, and then an optional 
tablespoon of sugar and I'm, I'm not going to include sugar today but that is something that you could cater to your taste so that's it it's just those three ingredients um, are on the burner we're going to let them get up to the point that they're simmering while I prep my apples so we're going to make a quick pickle with apples these are beautiful gold rush apples you want a nice tart and firm apple it's you want to get them in the winter because they're or fall or winter because they're this year's crop um, always take the opportunity to talk to your farmer um, depending if you're gonna bake or put in a soup or pickle an apple they've probably got an opinion of the best ones for you they are the expert um, and so these gold rush apples are something that I've pickled in the past and are recommended to me by by multiple farmers they're um, nice and tart but they've got a little bit of sweetness to them and they're really good firm apples so i'm going to chop these up and when i chop apples i want to get all those flat sides right so it's easy to chop i really just like pull out the core um and i'm going to do i'm going to do like quarter inch, quarter inch slices again. On this, so I've got just like beautiful, that one's a little bit bigger, maybe than I meant to be, but nice quarter inch slices. Don't worry about them being too perfect. Um, if you've got a mandolin, that's a wonderful thing to use to just make consistent slices. but your knife will work just fine. Um, pickled apples are pretty unique. It might not be the first thing that you think of to pickle, but they make a great, a great accompaniment. Give my brine a little stir. The salt is dissolving. If the sugar was in there, it'd be dissolving as well. I didn't have a spoon to stir it. I was just stirring the pot. slices one whole apple down um, in a pint jar this is a pint sized jar it calls for two apples and that seems right on for the size of these it of course will depend like our beets were a little bit smaller so I needed a few beets these apples seem perfect for just quarter inch slices Flat side down on the table. Nice little half moon or wedge shapes. And that might be enough to fill my jar. That was an apple and a half. I'm gonna start to pack them in. And a pint sized jar is nice. It is, honestly, it is the right size. Um, because again, I will want the brine to cover up the apples when it goes into the jar. So I'm gonna lay in the jar on the side and pack it in with apples so that they're standing up. And it'll give us the same opportunity to get the spices packed in there. Kind of separating the apples. Some of them fell over, we'll pick them back up. Oh yeah, that was a little bit less than an apple and a half. Filled this pint jar. Oh, beautiful. I love how that looks. So I've got my Gold Rush apple in the jar. Brine is simmering. Giving it another just bit of a stir. I'm gonna turn it off because it is ready. Um, and also my jars are about packed and ready. So for the apple, it is going to be accompanied by um, a couple cloves and I have made the mistake of putting too many cloves into pickles. So one fell in there from the jar. I'm gonna put two cloves in there. I'm gonna err on the side of not that much clove. 
Um, it's a very strong flavor and it is something that I accidentally overdid a batch of pickled peaches once and some of them are inedible because they had too much clove. So that is my, that is my story for you um, to be careful of that. The other thing that's gonna be a wonderful complement to these nice tart, tart apples is some ginger. Um, so I've got ginger root here. I already started to peel, peel it. A wonderful way to peel ginger is to just take a regular spoon um, and pull, or basically like, you know, just pulling off the skin, the brown part that covers the root. Um, and that is something that I haven't known for very long. It's a more recent trick I learned. Um, and I'm just going to put like two, what, what I would call like coins of ginger. I do like ginger, so something you could cater to your taste. I'm gonna put these two coins. Again, these actually are maybe a little bit thinner than quarter inch slices, but they'll slide right in there with the apples. I pushed those into the jar and my brine is ready. I'm giving it another little stir. Um, I'm gonna pour the brine over I might pour it over a sink, but I'm gonna pour it at least over the cutting board so that I don't spill. And I'll pick it up and show it to you. It's hot, but not, oh, well, it's warm, but not like boiling hot to handle the jar. Um, I put enough brine in there that it's covering those beets and beet stems. The fact that they it was pretty nicely packed is keeping them submerged below the brine is what we want. Um, some of the seeds came floating to the top, but that's okay. And I'm gonna do the same with my apples. And this brine recipe was enough for a quart jar or two pint jars, which is what I have here. And I've got just a tiny bit of brine left in my pot. So that was like the spot on right amount. Again, because the apples are packed, try to spin this around. Um, they're staying below the level of the brine. I'm gonna give them, there's some air that's probably gotten trapped in there. When I pack my fruit and vegetables, I'm gonna just pick the jar up and down Give it some taps. A little piece of apple floated to the top. It got away. That's okay. I'll do the same with the beets. Oh, and when I do this, when I tap it, I can actually see the beet jar can take a little bit more brine on top. So I'll pour that in. That was all of the brine. That was the perfect amount. Made a few more seeds float to the top, but that's okay. I'm gonna put on the lids and bring them up closer so you can see them. Um, these are our beautiful quick pickles, which we'll wanna let sit for maybe just like a day or two. The flavors will develop. Here's our apple and here's our beets. I love that the red pink color just takes over. Um, yeah, these will be, they'll be ready to eat soon. Remember we didn't can them, so they're not shelf stable. We're gonna put them in the refrigerator where they'll keep for like a month or two. So it'll be a snack that we can come back to. Um, we can make a snack tray if we're hosting some folks or we're just like refrigerator snacking in the middle of the night. Um, we'll pop them in there and eat them as they go. And those are our pickled beets and stems and pickled apples. And there's a couple more recipes of what you can pack your jars with um, winter vegetables and use this same brine with a mix and match of different spices that complement the different fruit or vegetable. Yay!